In this video, we're going to look at the process of getting a document approved, taking it through a workflow with another uh, person, and then ultimately publishing it into a number of different formats. So here's a sheet that we created previously in an earlier video. And having produced that piece of work, I'm logged in as Steve Granger. I want to get it approved. Um, if I flick to my metadata tab here, you'll see that this contains all the information about this particular drawing, but it also has the option of assigning an approver. Now, normally you would have that assigned for the project. I've left that blank for demo purposes, and you can see that I'm assigning Abigail approver, and I'm going to save that. So we've got an approver for this drawing, and if I go to my workflow tab, you'll see that we've got a workflow defined for this. Now, this happens to be the ISO 19650 workflow. If I was working on a different project, I can have a different workflow presented to the user. But here's my workflow. And as Steve, I can see that I'm at WIP. I'm at work in progress. That's also echoed here. It's, the drawing is at WIP. And I now want to move it forward. I'd ideally like to go to WIP approved, but I can't skip the approval process. I need to get it approved by somebody else. We've just identified that person as being Abigail. So all I need to do now is pick WIP for approval. You'll see the status here has changed to WIP for approval, but a couple of other things have happened as well. And, and chiefly, it's sent an email to Abigail. Now I happen to be logged in as two people and here I'm in as Steve up there, but if I switch to this other window, you'll see that I'm logged in here as Abigail. And Abigail will have received an email not dissimilar to this one. It won't be this exact email with a hyperlink in it to the drawing. And if she goes and follows that hyperlink, she will get to see uh, it'll take her through to the drawing and it's this drawing here. So, and this also appears in her assignments. I went and clicked on assignments to look at her assignments and you'll see that she's got this drawing assigned to take a look at. So she can use the viewer to zoom in and have a look around at the drawing. And she may notice that it says first four rooms, but it really ought to say room layouts. So she really needs to let Steve know that he's not quite finished his work. He ne now needs to make that change. If she pops open the little slider here, there are tools that change depending on what sort of document or object that you're touching at that time. And she can pick new annotations to go and mark this up and zoom in around the area that she wants to add a note. She'll pick this particular tool and say, add room, whoops, room layouts. Okay, that's fairly clear. Now, under normal circumstances, she might have had to print that to PDF, put it on Steve's desk and so on, but she doesn't have to do any of that here. All she needs to do is save that. Go back to the, the workflow here, so she can click on the workflow tab. She can see where it is, it's whipped for approval. And effectively, she's just going to push it back to work in progress. She's rejecting it. You can see it's whipped for approval. If she clicks on here, it disappears from her assignments. Her task is done. She's cleared her desk of that particular activity. And if we flick over to Steve's view of the world and we just do a refresh in here and we, we look at the, um, this particular drawing, which was this one here, um, we can see, whoops, if I pick on the PDF and preview it, We'll see that it's got a markup. He would have received an email, by the way, very similar to the one that we saw earlier, but because Abigail had rejected it. So he would receive that in email, follow through that link, and he would see that, OK, I've got to add room layouts. So he can pop back into Revit. He could go and edit this directly in Revit, but we make it a little bit easier for people by having a button up here to edit properties. And he can click on here and say room layouts. Save that. That saves it back into the system. Uh, but what it's also done is it's updated the title block here. So that's finished as far as he's concerned. He can save that drawing and 
in an earlier video you have seen that we used the publish sheets to print, it, uh, print this out so he's going to do that again it's still at work in progress so the only suitability code he can assign is s0 and he'll go ahead and ask the system to create that for him now in a normal office had i gone and done that it would have overwritten the previous uh, drawing in excitec docs what it will do is it will upversion it Whenever you look at that drawing, you'll always see the latest version, but you can right click on it and then see the history should you choose to do so. So he's now done his work. If we again do a refresh here so we can see what's what's actually happened and we just expand this open to take a look at the PDF once more. We can zoom in and see, yep, he's made that change. That's all good. From his point of view, his work is now done. He can go to the workflow, send it for approval. Again, Abigail would get an, an email to say, um, could you please uh, approve this? Um, she can check her assignments or follow that link. And this will just catch up there. And she can, uh, well, let's go and have, have a view from her point of view. We might as well make sure that what she's seeing is as we expect. Yes, room layouts has been added. She's happy with that. So all she needs to do is click the main um, one there, go to workflow and say it's WIP approved. Once again, that disappears from her list of tasks. And if we go back into Steve's view and refresh here, we'll see now that these drawings are all WIP approved. And in a a typical office what will happen is a number of drawings will get to this stage and then suddenly somebody will say we've got to get this out the door we need to do an issue and by the way when you go out and issue this please could you make sure that on each drawing you edit the title block to update the suitability code we want that to go out as b that's um, partial um, we also uh, what we want to do is um, update the revisions where necessary and when we go out to published um, because we're working in this ISO 19650 world don't forget that the revision which may be at P0 in this case as you can see because we've upped it um, is now at P01.02 you've got to strip off the 02 so please make you do sure you do that for each drawing oh and by the way we would also like this um, to go out to PDF DWF and DWG. Now, that's not uncommon, and uh, it could also be a huge amount of work if you've got lots and lots of drawings to do. Fortunately for Steve, he can make his life a lot easier. All he needs to do is pop into here. Um, this is now WIP approved. I won't go and print all of these, but I could batch them uh, simply by selecting them all and then picking across here. And we'll say we want DWF, DWG, and the PDF. It is WIP approved, so now I've got the full list and I can pick partially signed off on here and say I'd like to publish to Excitec Docs. So <clears throat> once again, he's not had to give it a name, he's not had to say where, and he's not worried about overwriting his work. That simply cannot happen. Also, he's not having to go into each sheet to edit the the title block it's all going to be done automatically for him so that um, and we'll see that in a second that the p01 has been stripped off and so on so if we go back into um, excitec docs here this went to published and if if i look here this is simple navigator here helps me go between the different folders we've got shared and published as identified in the iso 19650 we went to partial approval and if we then look at look at that you'll see a number of interesting things have happened so the file name has now changed to include um, the the suitability code which was B and it's got the revision of P uh, of P01 and if we expand that it's collected together each of the renditions so if I'm looking for this drawing I only need to look at it here and I'll find the others nestled underneath the other renditions that is and then if I have a look at this sheet, you'll see that um, the hard work's been done for me. It now says suitability code is B. B means partially signed off. And 
it's P01 because it's stripped off that internal version. So there we are.